this day we've gathered in your name calling out to you the glory like a fire awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're singing open up the heavens we want to see presence in this place your glory on our face we're looking to the skies descending like a cloud you're standing with us now lord unveil our eyes you're the reason we're Welcome to Christian Assembly. We're so glad you're here today. We trust that you're having a wonderful morning. The scripture says, praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your, re your youth is renewed like the eagles. Anybody here would like to have your youth renewed like the eagles? <laughs> yes. In my mind, I'm 22. But I look in the mirror and it betrays that. Or sometimes when I'm trying to pick things up, it tells me differently. Psalm 103 goes on to say, The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Praise God. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it's gone. And his place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obey who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Father God, we thank you this morning for your faithful love. We thank you, Lord, that you do renew our youth like the eagles. Lord, that you forgive our sins. You heal us. with us. Your faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. We love you this morning, Lord. 
And I pray, Lord, that as we begin this time of worship together, Lord, that you would speak, you would move, that you would minister the needs that came into this room this morning with us. Lord, I pray that you would touch those today. We give thanks for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you take a moment just to say hello to somebody close by and welcome them to the service before you're seated? We'll just take a, just a quick moment here. Somebody that is maybe new around you. Welcome them, greet them.
we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down
thank you for that today, Lord. Father, that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we just want to lift up uh, our churches in the community and some missionaries, some other uh, needs and people in our body, in our church here in Waseca. Father God, lift up uh, Pastor Andrew Eisker in the 4th Street of Evangelical Church. Lord, I've never been to that church and I don't know that pastor, but we know that you know him and that you are aware of of those believers in their ministry here. And we ask your blessing on that ministry. Lord, that that church would be a, a light to this community. That Pastor Eisker, Lord, would, uh, that you would just give him wisdom and guidance, Lord, as he leads that body of believers. Lord, that he would feed them the bread of life as he ministers to that body as they make disciples. And Lord, we pray for the churches of praise in Ukraine. Lord, and uh, just thankful for the, the work that they're doing, Lord. Lord, those people are hungry for you, and they're, and they're meeting those needs. Lord, they're, they're spending time and energy every day trying to meet the needs of those uh, people of Ukraine, Lord, who are suffering through this war. And we pray for Pastor Zanya and Galena, Lord, that, that you would just, Lord, give them wisdom and strength and, and guidance, Lord, as they not only minister to their churches, Lord, but just to the, the communities, Lord, the, the people near the front who, who need food, medicine, and clothing. Lord, provide for all those needs and all those people and, and, and the new believers that, that are coming to faith. Lord, we pray for David and, and Condra Millsaps missionaries to the Baltic states and Lord there's, there's there's great needs there as well Lord I'm sure there's refugees from Ukraine there and and Lord just uh, father give them the resources that they need to, to meet the needs of their body and any refugees in their countries Lord and and Lord, just pour out, pour out your love and your favor towards them Lord let that ministry expand for your glory we lift up North Central University, Lord, where so many wonderful pastors and missionaries came from, Lord, that our interim pastor went to and, and our former pastor, Brad, and uh, so many. Tony, Lord, we're, we're thankful for, for the fruit that's coming forth from that university. And Father, pray that, that they, the leadership there would continue to provide strong leadership and and curriculum, Lord, that, that would train these men and women, Lord, for your kingdom, kingdom's work. In Jesus' name. And, and we're so thankful for Pastor Wayne and Peggy Matthews, Lord, who've taken on the responsibility of being our interim pastor, Lord. And, and we're, we're just so blessed by them, Lord. And, and just pray that you would just bless them and, and meet, their, meet their needs and uh, strengthen their, their faith and their, their marriage and continue to, to bring fruit from that from their ministry Lord I pray for Tom and Teresa Remholt Lord and and 
and Lord, we, we thank you for helping Teresa through some, some uh, health issues and, and for help bringing them through uh, the, the flooding of their crops and, and Lord, so many things. And Lord, uh, we know that if we put our trust in you, Lord, that all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And we see that in that family, Lord. Bless them and their children. In Jesus' name. And for Carl and Inez Sonnenberger, Lord, I ask a special blessing on them today, Lord. And may they feel your presence today and through this week, Lord, as they, as they read your word and, and spend time with you and strengthen their marriage, bless their marriage, Lord. And just thank you for Carl's service on the, on the board, Lord, and, and just bless that family. In Jesus' name, thank you for hearing and meeting all these needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory. Amen. You may be seated as Walt, Brother Walt comes and uh, receives our offering. Okay. Uh, our kids... Uh, uh, Grades K through six can leave now and go for children's church. Tony's ready out there. And then we have offering takers. Gracious Lord, we thank you, Lord, for thy love and mercy, for all that you have given us. Now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon the offering and upon the people that are giving. Give them, meet all their needs, meet all the church's needs with this offering. In thy name we pray, amen. Now, while they're taking that, I'll make the an <coughs> announcements. <coughs> Monday at 7 p.m. is the church council meeting, so all church board meeting members, uh, don't forget that. And <clears throat> the, they're still taking uh, offerings for the uh, <clears throat> Ukrainian refugees kids camp. So if that is that something that is on your heart feel free to give okay um, coming up on uh, there's a red red cross drive blood drive 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on August 6th uh, having uh, given blood and having taken blood I know how important that is so uh, if you're able, please, please, give blood. And teen camp at Lake Geneva is uh, coming up July 29th through August 2nd. Uh, you can still register, I believe, for that. Yep. And uh, the information's uh, how to register is in the bulletin or if you have problems. See soon. And do we still need drivers? Yeah. We still need drivers to take them up. Okay. And this is for the ladies. There's a, a, a Thrive, Thrive Conf, Conference, the 2024 Women's Thrive Council Conference, and I believe it's going to be on Mayo Civic Center, October 11th, 12th. And to register, uh, so forth, it's also in the bulletin. So pick up your bulletin. Thank you. I think I want to hear the story about when you took blood. <laughs> <laughs> We said he gave blood and took blood, right? OK. 
had. So that's, there's a story behind that, um, I'm sure. Well, this morning we're going to be taking a look in the, the book of Joshua, chapter 1. And uh, my plan at this point is for us to kind of work through the book of Joshua um, in a series that I'm, I guess I would entitle A Nation in Transition. In the announcements, it was mentioned that there is a council meeting tomorrow evening, and uh, we would appreciate that you would pray for our council members and for myself as, as we begin to move forward, um, even beginning to maybe talk about um, a past, pastoral search committee and just what, what we should do. Um, we need wisdom. We need direction from the Lord. And so we would appreciate, we covet your prayers. Um, in that. So thank you for that in advance. <clears throat> I appreciate the guys that uh, serve on the council here at uh, Christian Assembly. I'm grateful, grateful for the faithful leadership that you have here that's in place. Um, Pastor Brad did a great job in putting together leadership here and, and uh, as a church. Um, I commend you on just the leadership that you have here. It's wonderful. So the Lord will certainly bless as, as things move forward. Well, I'm, I'm going to go on ahead. I know we prayed a lot in the service. Um, I don't think you can ever over overdose on that. So let's go on ahead and pray again as we get into God's word together this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for your faithful love. I thank you, Lord, that you're here in this place this morning and that you desire... Um, to, to speak to us. You desire to do something incredible in our lives and through our lives. Lord, we know that you have us and that you have a plan for the future here at Christian Assembly. And we're trusting you for that, Lord. Help us to have uh, ears tuned to you, to, to be acutely tuned to you so that we can hear your voice and then follow your direction and give us boldness to do that, Lord. We trust you. We give you thanks for it this morning. We open our hearts and our, our ears to you this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> what are you afraid of? What are those kinds of things that you're, you're afraid of? Um, I've got several pictures up here. Some people are afraid, deathly afraid of spiders. Anybody here afraid of spiders? Arachnophobia? I remember um, at my house as my children were growing up, um, I would hear a blood-curdling scream coming from upstairs. Um, there's this scream, and I'm thinking that somebody is actually incredibly injured. Um, and so I'm running up the stairs, and I'm trying to follow where this scream is coming from. And I come in, and I go, what's wrong? What, what happened? And they point. <laughs> and there's this little spider they go, get it, get it, you know? And it's like, <laughs> you could get it. No, you get it. <laughs> Some people are afraid of spiders. I don't like bugs landing on me. Um, I've been bit by a few things that, like, when they're around, I'm just like, um, no. Uh, there are people that are afraid of, actually, I look at this picture, and it actually makes me a little anxious. I'm not afraid of, I'm not claustrophobic, but I don't want to be there <laughs> um, in that tight of a space, you know, in this crevice. I watch those documentaries, you know, where somebody maybe falls through the ice on Mount Everest and they fall into one of those, those deep places and it's like, ah, no. <laughs> do I ever want to climb Mount Everest? I'm, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm too old to do that anyways or fear of heights. Um, and sometimes when you're standing at a, at a tall place and you get close to the edge, you kind of feel, feel it in your stomach and you feel like you're being pulled over the, the edge. And he's like, no, 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 um, don't want to do that. So people have all kinds of fears. In fact, on the next slide, I've listed um, a ton of them. They're, they actually have a phobic name for everything, by the way. 
I mean, you could find the phobic name for whatever it is that you're afraid of. Um, there's fear of the dark. There's fear of needles, fear of flying, fear of blood. We just mentioned blood this morning. There are people that are afraid of it. Um, I have to admit that when they take blood from my arm, I have to look away. I don't want to see them put the needle in. Um, so there's uh, fear of germs, fear of making decisions. There's fear of failure, fear of change, fear of fear itself. Or pantophobia, fear of everything. What are you afraid of? Everything. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be hard to get out of bed in the morning if you're afraid of everything. There's so many fears. There's as many fears as there are things and people. The problem is, is that fear can be debilitating. Um, fear can actually hold us back. Fear can distort reality to where things look differently than they really are because we're afraid. We've got some thing created in our mind. Fear can magnify our problems and our circumstances. And I've had people tell me this. They go, it was so big. Like the spider was huge. And I'm going, oh, but the legs. <laughs> you know, it distorts reality for people. It makes the, the problem and the circumstance so big. Fear can paralyze us and immobilize us. I think about the Israelites with Goliath. They were frozen. They couldn't move. This guy comes out every day and they're frozen in position. And it's immobilizing. I remember when I was growing up, I was playing with my, my youngest sister who, who later, she had a disease and, and passed away when she was 18. But I was playing with her when she was little. She was going down the slide and we were in our yard um, at, the, at the far end of it and playing and I, we were laughing. And, and my dad, I guess, had called me from the house. And I didn't hear him. And I still have hearing that I can hear people selective. Um, but this wasn't selective. I, I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him. He'd come to the middle of the yard and I didn't hear him. Because he, he, he told me later that he'd called me several times. He came down to where we were playing and I was bent over and he touched me. And I turned around and it was my dad and I, I don't know what happened. I screamed. I screamed and I stood there and I couldn't move. And I, I just became paralyzed and I screamed and I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. He had to pick me up and carry me into the house and lay me in bed. And I'm just, I just laid there. And it's like, the, I remember that traumatic moment. It's like, what in the world? And why did I do that? For some reason, it caught me just right. Fear can do that. It can just paralyze you. It can immobilize you where you don't know what to do. It can undermine a person's true abilities. It can cloud and control your thinking. Fear can even make you sick. It can actually physically make you sick. Um, fear can cause a person to act irrationally. And fear can keep a person from their highest potential. I think about Matthew chapter 25. You remember there, there's a parable that Jesus told of three guys? There was a master who was going on a journey and he gave three of his servants some talents. He gave one ten, one five, one one. The guy who had ten went out and doubled it. The guy who had five went out and doubled. But the guy who had one, it's interesting, he had a rationale behind it. He said, I know that my master is, you know, a harsh man um, that he plants. He sows wherever he, he even doesn't plant. And so I'm going to take my one talent and I'm going to dig a hole and I'm going to bury it. And I, I want to submit for your consideration that that was actually out of fear. Fear of losing it. Fear of doing the wrong thing. Fear of what the master's going to do if I do the wrong thing. And it caused him to do nothing. Can I just submit for your consideration this morning that God doesn't want us to live like that. That's really not God's best for us, to live 
like that. It keeps, keeps us from our highest potential. It kept him from his highest potential. So what if he would have lost it? I don't think if he would have tried that he would have lost it. But at least he did something. At least he did something. My temptation is to talk to you a little bit about that, but I think I might save that for later. Because I'm telling students all the times to stop being afraid to do the wrong thing and to fail. You're going to make mistakes, and it's okay. I don't know if you're aware or not, but that being a Christian doesn't make you perfect. Does anybody know that? Are you aware of that? You're going to make mistakes. But the Lord has us. He's got it covered. So God's word came to Joshua in chapter one. Let's take a look at it. So when it came to time for Joshua to take uh, the helm and lead the children of Israel into the promised land, one of the first things God tells him is, do not be afraid. That's one of the first things the Lord tells him. And that for good reason. So let's take a look at these nine verses. Joshua chapter one, verse nine. You're probably pretty familiar with this. It's a famous, like, well-known area of scripture. It's not like Leviticus 23 or something like that. We're familiar with Joshua chapter one. So let's read it together here. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. And I want you to read together with me this last section. Will you say it with me? <clears throat> um, have I not commanded you? Say it with me. Amen. Not commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Lord told Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous three times in nine verses. Three times. He's actually going to hear it a fourth time as you move into the latter part of chapter one. So in chapter one of the book of Joshua, he's going to hear it four times. But three times the Lord says it to him. Be strong and courageous. Why? Why does he say that? Well, the Lord would not have said, do not be afraid if there was no potential for fear. There was potential. Um, he, would, he doesn't tell us something if we don't need it. Right? So the Lord says, Joshua... Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong. In fact, do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. So he tells him three times and to not be afraid. One of the first things, the first reasons that he tells him not to fear is the present circumstances. Is the present. The name Moses is mentioned 11 times in chapter one. It's interesting the book starts out with Moses is dead. 
I'm thinking that's obvious. Moses is dead. And then the Lord says it again to Joshua. He says, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. I knew that. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) I knew that. We all know that. What God is doing is he's acknowledging that that is actually a crucial issue right here. It's crucial, and God is saying, I acknowledge it. I get it, Joshua. Moses is gone. And you have to understand, he's been the leader for 40 years. He's been the guy. He was the one that took him out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. He's the guy that had a staff that went and the water went He's the guy that went like this and water went out of the rock. He's the guy that prayed and the ground opened up and swallowed a bunch of people. I mean, he's the guy that came down from the mountain and his face glowed. He's the guy. And I can hear the conversations in the, house, in the households. Well, this is just great. Moses is gone. I can hear some wife talking to her husband. Well, who's going to lead us now? That Joshua guy? Who's he? He's, I mean, he's just the associate. He's the assistant pastor. (laughs) He isn't, he doesn't even have a staff. Or staff. (laughs) He's never parted any water. What have we seen him do, this Joshua guy? What does he know? We're at a crucial crossroads. There's a shift for the nation in leadership. This is a a crucial moment. Moses is dead. He's not coming back. What are we going to do? That's significant. What do we do now? And I could see that there's potential for fear for Joshua going. And the Lord said, I want you to do this. Yeah, I've been, I've followed Moses and I've been the assistant. What? You really want me to do this? Do you think I'm capable? I mean, there's, there's potential for fear. So the present circumstances bring fear, but coupled with that is the past 40 years. Joshua and Caleb are the oldest people in the group. Everybody else in their generation is gone. Joshua's one of the oldest guys there. 70s. Okay? Everybody else is younger. He's been around. He's been around the block. He's seen everything. He's heard all the stuff. In fact, there's times when he hasn't agreed with everything because he spoke up and Moses said, no, we need to let it be like this. Joshua is the likely candidate. He's been with Moses. He's assisted all along. But being an assistant, I'm going to tell you, is different than being number one. I've been an assistant pastor. I started out in ministry as a senior pastor of a small church in near Greeley, Colorado. And from there, I went on staff under a, a wonderful gentleman who was my mentor and Um, Loved him. He's since gone on to be with the Lord. And I remember there were difficult times and I stood in his doorway and I just said, how are you doing? He'd say, yeah, it's kind of tough right now. And then he'd tell me. And he'd say, what do you think? And I said, I don't know, you're the pastor. 
Because <laughs> it's different being the associate than it is the guy where the buck stops here. You know what I'm saying? It's a completely different role. So this is a time of national transition. A lot's going to change. And there's going to be a lot of change for Israel. For 40 years, there's been a cloud and a pillar of fire. That's going to stop. For 40 years, there's been manna. That's going to stop. There's going to be a lot of change. And not everybody's going to like it. By the way, they're even going to stop living in tents. They're going to move in to the land coming up. Things are going to change. That's huge change for this community that's lived out in the wilderness for 40 years. Big change is coming. So the past 40 years, Joshua's one of two people who've been alive and can remember back the 40 years. That's ha that has its advantages. He knows a lot. But it has its disadvantages because that will play with you mentally. I hope you're with me this morning because here's one of the things that's happening here is that when you have that much history, it affects how you act in the future. He saw all the complaining. He heard it all. He saw all the ways that God dealt with that. He saw how the people can be. He saw how they complained and murmured and how they drugged their feet through the wilderness. You remember the picture that I had here uh, some weeks ago, you know, with the mom dragging her child. That's how the children of Israel were. Joshua has that in his mind, and he's going, the past can affect how you walk into the future, and it can hold you back, and you can be afraid of what happened and be afraid to step out because of what took place here. Do you understand what I'm saying? These things were not only true here, but they're true in every transition. The past can hold you back from stepping into what God has in front of you. Let me say it again. The past can hold you back from what, stepping into what God has in front of you. It can dictate our thinking and even paralyze. So the people, along with the past, Joshua has memories of how the people can respond and rebel. Will they go with him? Will they cooperate? Everybody has an opinion. <laughs> the fear of people can be what they think, you know, can, uh, and what they think is really strong. I'm going to make a confession to you this morning. I like to be liked. Is anybody here like that? I enjoy being liked. In fact, um, I work sometimes toward that so that somebody will like me. I want to be liked. I want to be accepted. And actually, that's a human condition. We all want acceptance. But the problem is, is that that can develop into a fear of what people think and what, they're, what they'll say and what they'll do, and it can actually hold you back because we become afraid of other people. And in fact, we play the scenario out even before it happens. Oh, I'm just being really honest this morning. I've even done this with my wife. Where I play the argument out ahead of time. Because if I say this, she's going to say that. I don't know if she's watching this this morning or not. And then I'm going to say this and she's going to say that and I know that I'm already going to lose and so I'm not going to say anything. And that's my worst mistake. Because I have already lost before I did anything. Because I'm afraid. And I know pastoring... Um, that's hurt me 
is my fear of people in my past, in my early pastoring, because I was afraid of what somebody would do or what they would say, and I didn't want to lose them. And I was afraid. And I didn't do the right thing, didn't say the right thing. Joshua, the Lord is saying to you, be strong and courageous. Be bold. Because you're leading a couple million people and not everybody's going to agree with you. And not everybody is going to give you the look that you want. Not everybody's going to smile when you announce how you're going to take Jericho. Not everybody's going to go, yay! There's going to be people that stand in the back and go, what in the world? And they're going to give you the look like you're nuts. And you don't know what you're doing. But you can't be afraid in the faces of the people. So that's one of the things the Lord is telling Joshua. And the pressure. I told you, Moses was an amazing leader. Moses lifted his staff. He did all of these things. And the pressure of that. I can just see Joshua going, Lord, I am not Moses. And the Lord says, I know that. You don't have to be. I've called you. And then here's the big one, the potential for fa failure. What if I can't do it? What if it doesn't work? It sounds like Moses out at the bush, doesn't it? It's all the same questions. Every leader asks it. What if I blow it? What if... What if I lift my staff and it doesn't happen? That's when you just have to go, God, you told me. I just, okay. <laughs> you get what I mean? I feel all of that in my own heart at times when I step into things that I feel like the Lord wants me to do and I just go, Okay, here. You know what I mean? Can anybody relate to this this morning? So, God says to Joshua, You've got this because I've got you. I want you to repeat that aloud with me this morning. You've got this because I've got you. Will you just say that with me? You've got this because I've got you. That's really what the Lord is telling Joshua. Joshua, you got it because I've got you. Because it's not dependent on you. Oh, I forget that. I forget that. I forget that it's not in me. It's not based on me. It's not because of me. It's because of the Lord. He's got me. And that's what I have to rely on. So what did the Lord give Joshua as an antidote to fear? Three things that I want to point out. And they're, they're conveniently in the letter P. The first thing that he gives him is a promise. The promise. Here's what he says. I'm going to fulfill the promise that I gave clear back to Abraham and the promise that I made to Moses. And I'm renewing that promise to you. In other words, Moses, my servant, is dead, but my promises don't die. The, Moses is dead, but the promise is alive. So it doesn't matter. Isn't that great? Can I just make a, a direct application to this, okay? God has got Christian assembly. Pastor Brad has moved to a great, wonderful new ministry, but the ministry here is not over. I know you know that, but I want to reinforce it this morning. We're a church in transition, but we got this because God's got us. I got one amen. 
Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The promise is still alive. And Joshua is standing on the precipice of the promise. In chapter 1, verse 6, he says, The promise that I swore to their ancestors. Joshua 1, 3, As I promised Moses. They were still carrying Joseph's bones, for goodness sake. Joseph said, Don't bury me in Egypt. No, 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 no. Don't leave me here. I want you to take my bones to the promised land. And they had him in a case somewhere. They're pretty brittle by now. It's been a long time. They've been carrying these things around. Nope, nope, don't leave them here. Bring them along. Take them into the promised land. The promise that God had made. God's promises are good. And what the Lord is telling Joshua, so Joshua, let's get going. You hold the promises. You hold them now. They were held by Abraham. They were held by Moses. And now you hold them. And you're going to take these people into this promised land. Number two, God's presence. In Joshua 1.5, the Lord said this to, to Joshua. I will be with you like I was with Moses. Whew. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I know, that, I know that it wasn't just Moses. I know that you did this. And the Lord says, I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. Oh, that's good news. That's what I needed to hear. I will never leave you or forsake you. Does that sound familiar to anybody? The Lord says that to his people. I will never leave you or forsake you. These are for us. In Joshua 1.9, it says, The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He says it three times. So three times again. Be strong and courageous. I'll be with you. The promises are renewed. Like, he keeps repeating these things just in nine verses so that he gets it. My promise is still good. My presence will go with you. The Lord demonstrated constant presence throughout the 40 years these last 40 years. God is drawing Joshua's thoughts to that reality. He's saying, Joshua, okay, when you're afraid, remember. Don't remember how the people grumbled, but remember that there was a fire and a cloud and that I've always been there. I've always taken care of you. I've always done it. I bet if we had people stand up this morning, we could have testimonies of what God has done over the course of the last number of years in people's lives and in this place and how the Lord has provided and how the Lord has, has done wonderful things. Yeah? So we draw our minds to that. And the God who did that is the same God that is alive today. His presence is still as, as real. The promise is still as true. The third thing is the power of God's word. So, the promise, the presence, and the power. He said, I've, I've given you these things. He told Joshua, obey the law that Moses gave you. Don't turn away from it so that you will be successful. Keep the law in your mind and on your lips so that you will be successful and prosperous. He says it again. You've got my promise. You've got my presence. And now you have my word. You have my word. Keep the word in front of you because it's the power of the word that's going to do it hanging on to that. Um, this has so many applications this morning. We live in a very crazy day. Yeah? There are things going on in the world I would never thought that I would see. I just went to a couple theater productions um, this last week because I, I have former students that are always performing. But it's interesting in their casting and, and when they um, and this is becoming a common thing that people list themselves as um, he, him, she, her, they, them. 
What are your pronouns? I don't know. <laughs> this Pastor Wayne's okay, or this Wayne. We live in such a crazy day. And if there's ever time you're going to have to be strong and courageous, it's today. You need to be strong and courageous. You need to know the word of God. Please don't get all the word that you get right here on Sunday morning. It's not enough. Your tank will be empty about midday Monday. I hope it lasts a little longer than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I think a lot of Christians run on fumes. My wife is one of those people. Um, so if she's watching, she can hear this too. Um, she likes to see how far she can take it with the light on. The car. Anybody else like that in here? Yeah, in the car. You know what I'm talking about? The, the fuel light. Because it says, <clears throat> um, the fuel light comes on. She says, oh, I've got 30 more miles to go. And I said, can we please fill the car up? She goes, it's fine. <laughs> I go, I am going to come and rescue you, and I'm, it's not fine. <laughs> She gets away with a lot. <clears throat> but I think some Christians are like that. They're running on fumes. Their tank says you need to fill up. And they're so empty. They have no word. No word. Um, that, they're, that they're holding on to. So Moses is gone, but God is still present. Moses is dead, but my promise and my plan is still very much alive. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Joshua, you will need to take hold of what God is asking. Be strong and courageous. It doesn't mean, now listen to me, being strong and courageous does not mean to be arrogant, harsh, rough, or mean. I don't think there's a place for that. That isn't being strong and courageous. Well, God told me to be strong and courageous and here's the sword of the Lord. <laughs> I've known Christians that are sticking people with the sword of the Lord all over the place. And those people are lying there wounded and then pointing back to God and saying, that's why God doesn't work. God didn't call us to be that kind of strong and courageous. You don't have to go work out in the gym to be strong and courageous. I don't even know what Joshua looked like. He's saying, now listen to me carefully. He's saying, don't be weak, Joshua, when it comes to doing what God says. God, you told me to do this. Okay. It's going to take strength. It's going to take fortitude to step into it and say, okay. Okay. A lot of times, Christians mistake strong and courageous for telling everybody else what to do. But God is saying, Joshua, you be strong and courageous and do what you're told to do and stand up at that time. And you can be gentle and say, no, gentlemen, this is actually the direction that God is telling us to go. Who's with me? Can we do it together? And to be bold enough to take that kind of a stand. Don't be weak, Joshua, when it comes to doing what God says. Be willing to stand up and speak up. Be willing to lead. Be willing to be a leader. Let your confidence be in the Lord, his promise, his presence, his word, that's where you put your confidence. So being strong and courageous, being strong in the Lord, means that you're putting your confidence in Him. You don't have to be afraid. Failure, you don't have to be afraid. I'll give you success. He does say success twice in this chapter. I don't have time to define that for you today. I have a whole, a whole definition that I would like to go over with you about success, but we'll talk about that maybe next week. The people 
Don't be afraid of him, Joshua. I'll be with you. That you're not enough, that you don't know what you're doing, I've given you my word. It's in front of you. That you don't know where you're going, I've given you my promise. Don't be afraid, Joshua. Don't be afraid. Step into it. Step into what God is saying, to what God is wanting you to do, to what God is calling you to. Moses, my servant, is dead, Joshua. Get up. I'm calling you. Yep, you. I'm moving you into that position. You're going to lead them. Okay. 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 Be strong. Strong in the Lord. Strong in his word. Strong holding on to his promise. Strong and courageous. Courageous to step into it even when you're afraid. When I am afraid, David said, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. So what I want to ask you this morning, what I'm leaving you with is, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What are the things that just scare you? (laughs) Some people are afraid to say a particular thing because they say, oh, as soon as I say it, that's what God will have me do. I remember telling my wife before we were married, I said, I'm, I'm going to go to this little Bible school that's, that's in Denver, Colorado. Small Bible college. And I said, I, I feel like God wants me to do something. And I told her, I said, but it's not preach. I said, I could never do that. And within a number of years, I was pastoring a church. And it wasn't that God had to drag me in. It was by the time I started to step into what he wanted, God put a desire in my heart. And he started to shift me and change me. What are you afraid of? What is God saying to you? What is he wanting to do in your life or in your family? Is God calling you? Is he calling you into something? Is he calling you to do something? Is God telling you to do something and that you need to be strong and courageous and to go on ahead and go for it? What's he wanting to do through you? I'm just going to throw this your direction. Look around the church for just a moment. Just look around. Just, just take a look both ways, you know. Yeah, okay? Okay. We wanted to do a VBS here in August. I think I was pushing on that a little bit because when I look around, I think we need some kids in the church. But doing a VBS is a lot of work and a lot of manpower and a lot of preparation because you don't just teach lessons. You got to build a set and all kinds of things that take a lot of work and we just don't have the time to do it in August. So we're looking to shift gears and do just one weekend of a special guest here to help us toward the end of August. And I'll let you have more details about that. But even if we have, and I'm asking God, okay, don't be afraid. I'm asking God for 30 children in children's church every Sunday. And I'm asking God for a dozen youth. But in order to have that, you have to have something in place for them. Which means you have to have people who are prepared and ready to do that and step up to the plate. So I'm going to ask it again. Is God calling you? Is God asking you to pitch in and do something? to help out for sure he's calling you to pray I want to encourage us that way 
Where are the places in Wasika that need to be reached? Pockets of, of, of this community that need to be touched with the gospel. Is God calling you? Be strong and courageous. I think sometimes as Christians, and I'm taking too long this morning, I'm going to close in just a moment, so I'm trying to give you hope. I think sometimes as Christians, we're in a political season, and sometimes we want to stand up and we think, you know, speaking out our voice about some of these things that are going on, and and think there are times we need to do that, but I think one of the most effective things that we can do in this time that we live in is to reach the lost. Let's get people saved and then let God take care of the rest. Let him change hearts and lives. Let's get people to the cross. Children to the cross. Youth to the cross. Yeah, yeah. I hope you hear my heart this morning. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I hope I didn't make you afraid this morning. I don't think I'm too scary. Am I scary? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. What are you afraid of? Don't be afraid. And maybe the Lord is asking you to do something specific in your life and he's been talking to you about it to step out or to, to step into what he's asking you of you. Maybe to let something go. Maybe to receive something that he's wanting to put into your life and you've been afraid of it. Maybe you're afraid of change. You're going, I just don't know if all that change, if I can handle that. Don't be afraid. Be strong and courageous. The Lord's got you. The Lord's got you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you care about us, and that you're going to do something here, that you are doing something here in Wasika. Lord, we want to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing. Lord, we're asking you in Jesus' name, as we open our hearts to you, as we open our ears to you, that you would speak to us. Lord, I pray that you would make your voice so clear there's no mistaking, and that you give us courage and strength to step out, to step forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Will you stand with me this morning? I'm just going to ask us to do something a little crazy. (laughs) If you're willing to say, Lord, okay. I hear your call to be strong and courageous. I want to step into that. Your promise, your presence, the power of your word. Let's take a step. You can come clear down here or even just step out into the aisle and we're going to pray one more time before we leave. But let's do it as a, as a church. You don't have to move. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. In fact, I won't look at you. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm encouraging you. If the Lord is impressed on you to take a step, I want you to step now. I want you to step now. Let's step. Go on ahead and step. We don't need music to step. Let's just step. Lord, I hear you. Help us to be strong and courageous, Lord. We're willing to be strong and courageous. To step into what you're asking us to do. To step into what you're calling us to. Individually and as a church, Lord, we're willing. Help us not to be afraid. Not to be afraid of failing. Not to be afraid of change. Not to be afraid of the forces of the world not to be afraid to speak up, to share our faith with someone. When you're prompting us, Lord, help us not to be afraid. We accept that this morning. Lord, we we just step out for you and with you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You see us, Lord. You see our hearts. You see our lives, Lord. Speak to us. Give us courage. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
whatever he's called you to do, whatever he's brought into your life, he will do that. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you'd like to take time to pray, just encourage you to do that. Otherwise, have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you. I'm excited for the good things that the Lord has in store for us. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.